the Farnborough Air Show is guaranteed to thrill the crowds. But the Prime Minister didn't come all the way here to open the event just because of the aerobatics. It's down here on the ground that the headlines are really made. Farnborough is all about big business, an estimated £30 billion worth at the last show in 2010. Now, a lot of the exhibitors are British companies, and while obviously that's good for UK industry, it should also pay a dividend to the forces. Having an indigenous defence industry that understands Her Majesty's Armed Forces and what they require is hugely important. Many of the requirements that come out from the Ministry of Defence will require a certain degree of background understanding and context. Uh, a UK industry will understand that, not the least of which because a large number of that industry will have been serving members of the armed forces and bring that expertise and experience back into the companies with them. Here at Farnborough, the A400M has moved a step closer to entering RAF service in 2014 with the announcement of a new £50 million simulator to train its pilots. It's safe to say it is as realistic as it can be. Uh, these, these devices are, are not like the, the old devices with the little, the little uh, toy trees and, and, and houses. These are full uh, immersion training and, and the pilots uh, flying this will feel like they're flying the real thing. Got full degrees of motion, six degrees of motion, uh, superb graphics, everything, the look and feel is exactly as they will experience uh, in the cockpit for real. As ever, there's a glimmer of future technologies too, like the Watchkeeper UAV due into Afghanistan sometime soon. Seeing it here today uh, and actually speaking to the people that designed it, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be another leap forward from Hermes 450. It's going to be good stuff. The air show isn't all about the brand new though. One of the biggest stars was one of the oldest. Will Inglis, Forces News, Farnborough.